everyone. Welcome to Wool and Spinning. Um, my name is Rachel and this is episode 99. I want to thank you so much for joining me in this place and I want to thank the Patreon um, community especially. You guys are the ones that keep me on the air. You're the ones that are here week after week after week and um, I just really appreciate your patronage and continuing to support the show and continuing to be here. Um, you guys um, make it all possible so thank you so much if you're a new viewer to the show thank you so much for joining me and this was a previously recorded live stream that um, happened with our patreon community if you're interested in learning more you can head over to patreon.com slash wildfire pearls and to those who are returning viewers of the show thank you so much for joining and thank you for um, continuing to watch I hope that um, there's value in in what you see here um, I have started releasing some of the teaching content that's for the Patreon community. I started to release it this month in July, so it's six months behind. If you're a Patreon supporter, you get it. Um, it's timely and it you, you get the teaching content. It goes with our, our overarching theme for that three months. So right now we're looking at carded preps. And woolen and um and woolen preps and, and woolen yarn and that's um what the teaching content is about about. Um so for those who are um seeing some of the teaching content popping up, if you're not a patron of the show, um it's six months old. So it's from um stuff we were working on six months ago. But I hope it's still valuable and I hope you still um enjoy it and learn something from it. So um it's my pleasure to share that with you and um um yeah, I hope it's uh, I hope you learn a bit of something. In today's show, it is absolutely stacked. Um, if you're just popping into the chat channel now, I started right away before we had people um, really watching yet because um, it is a big show. I've got a lot to share and I have a lot um, to go over. Um, I have a ton of giveaway announcements. Um, so I'm actually wondering, um, I might, I'm going to ask the pop-up channel because people are just getting in there and they're just getting um, started. I think YouTube was a little bit slow to load because Kelly, it took her a minute to get in there. Um, I'm, do you guys, I have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight eight giveaways to announce and it takes up a lot of time on the live stream. Do you guys want me to just record a separate segment and put it at the end of the um, show when it is uploaded later this week or do you want me to take time in the live stream and um, uh, do it announce everybody now it just takes time so um, Kelly you're in the chat in the chat so if you um, speak up and let me know what you, what you want to do that would be awesome um, in today's show we have a spinning growth segment this is something new for the show um, today we are talking about some yarn that uh, my friend Eve spun and shared with us in the uh, Ravelry thread. So if you go into Ravelry um, and you go to our, our uh, group, um, Woolen Spinning, it um, is called the Spinning, it's Spinning Growth and it's stickied at the top and you can have a look in there and you can have a, um, uh, look at, at, at what people are sharing and what it's all about. There was an, a separate, in uh, episode 97B, there was an, a whole, um, um, like intro to what, what that segment is all about. And I'll link it in the show notes at wellfordpearls.com or at patreon.com slash wellfordpearls. Um, and you can see what spinning growth is all about. So we've got a spinning growth segment that we're going to chat about. Um, and then I've got some, I've got some finished yarn to share with you. And then I wanted to talk about two works in progress that I'm that I've got going on. And actually, I should have put one of them on my dress form. So we might take some time while we're in the show, and I'll just edit it out when it goes live or when it when it's released. Um, uh, and I'll put it on my dress form, and I'll actually show you guys um, what it all looks like. And we'll zoom the camera in, and you guys can actually see uh, what it looks like on my dress form um, because I finished um, the body of my sparkle cardigan that I've been working on for quite a while. So. Um, we have <coughs> um, the kids are at camp the house is quiet I've only got Charlotte here at home with me and she's sleeping right in the hallway here um, we I have sort of a little bit of time while while the house is quiet so we're just gonna jump right into the show um, Okay, people are happy to let me do the announcements later, so that's awesome, I will do that. Um, the one thing that I will announce is um, for July, um, we, have, we will have another giveaway going. Um, for the teaching content that I made for 
July. So those of you who are patrons, you've seen the teaching content. Um, I carded up a whole bunch of nests. Um, I'm just gonna get it away from my microphone. Just pull them out. I carded up a whole bunch of nests, all different bits and bats of fiber. Um, I put some sparkle in there. I didn't really put any other texture because I was sort of more demoing um, um, using the drum carter. Um, so if you're a patron and you haven't seen this content yet, definitely go um, and check it out. Um, you should have gotten an, an email notification about it. And if you're not getting email notifications on Patreon to say that there's posts um, for you to see, it's because you've turned it off on Patreon by accident. So either download the app onto your smart device or go on your desktop and have a look. Make sure that you're getting the notifications. Um, anyways, I carded these all up. There's, um, I think there's, yeah, there's eight in total. So for July, you could win these. So go into the July episode thread and tell us um, what your favorite prep is to spin. So comb top, um, hand pulled roving, nests, bats, doesn't matter. Tell us what it is. It's open to everybody. It's in the Ravelry group. Make sure you're a member. Um, and um, those could be yours. And then the rest of the um, stuff for giveaway, so the other seven <laughs> i'll uh, record separately and I'll, I'll pop it into the show probably right about here hi guys okay so we have a ton of giveaways to do um i already announced one on the show it was the um july calendar giveaway that's going to florence um who won our 2019 calendar. Um, she's from New Zealand. Um, Florence, I don't know if you've got a mailing address right now or not. I know there is one on Patreon, but if you could get in touch with me and let me know uh, where to send it, that would be awesome. Um, we have more to give away. All right, so from last show, um, we had hit 1,500 members in the Ravelry group, which is amazing, and people have continued to jump in there and introduce themselves, which I super appreciate. So um, Bettina in Virginia, your username is Willow Goldenrod, post number 247. You will be getting some stitch markers from me. I don't have them right here. They're over there. Um, if you could send me your um, mailing address, that would be awesome, and I will pop those in the mail for you. So congratulations, and thank you to everybody for joining the Ravelry group and for participating and interacting. I really appreciate it. Um, in May, we had the bats giveaway. We had the cool one and the warm one. Um, they are right here. Sorry for the crinkling. The, let's see what I pull out. The warm bat is going to Carly Jean. Carly Jean Fullman, post number 54. She's also happens to be one of our patrons of the show. Um, I think I have your address, Carly. So, um, just bear with me and let me see and I will pop that in the mail to you. Um, she is in Arizona. And the other one is going to Eve who is in England. Um, and her username on Ravelry is A-O-I-B-H-10. I don't know how you say that. A-O-B-A? I'm not sure. Anyways, she's getting the cool back. Um, thank you to you both. So congratulations to Eve and Carly. And then um, for the June episode thread for new spinner, your new spinner stories, how you came to spinning, we had our 100 grams of Superwash BFL from Smith & You, which is a, um, a Dyer Marianne up in Kamloops, British Columbia, just north of me. And that is going to Peregrinia. Um, I don't know your name, I don't know where you're from, because um, there's nothing on your um, Ravelry uh, page, but it was post number 40, 37, and um, I will be saying that to you, to you if you could just give me, um, send me your um, uh, mailing address, that would be awesome. What else do we have to give away? Um, we have a, another calendar that went out in June. Um, again, um, one of the woolen spinning calendars. This went to Mari, who's one of our patrons. This is a Patreon giveaway. The, the calendars are all for patrons, um, giveaway for patrons. So Mari is local to me and actually a friend of mine. So that was kind of nice that she won that. Off of the woolen spinning radio, um, we had a giveaway um, that I had created from Diz Darrow Ranch. It's um, three and a half ounces of um, Shetland. It's right over there. I'm not going to go grab it because it's this massive, massive bag. I asked you, um, this again is for patrons. It was a giveaway 
um, as part of that um, episode of the audio podcast that comes out monthly for um, the show. Um, I had asked you uh, to just share your reflections um, about the interview with Lori and about um, her comments about running a ranch up just again outside of um, Kamloops, British Columbia. And Hannah won. So Hannah, if you could send me your mailing address, that would be awesome. Uh, and lastly, no, that's everything. That is enough. <laughs> that is a lot of giveaways. So if you could send me your uh, mailing addresses, that would be awesome. Um, and I will pop those in the mail um, within the next uh, few weeks. Congratulations. So if you guys could just um, take a moment, just watch as the names scroll through. We've got about eight winners for various things and you guys um, may be one. And so if you could just have a look and see if your username is there. If you're a patron of the show and you won something, I have sent you a message. I will send you a message this week. So because um, you probably watched the live stream and you maybe don't want to go back and watch the whole show again. So I will send you a, uh, a message. All right, let's get into the show. Um, I'm gonna switch the cameras around because, um, oh, thanks Kelly. Kelly said they're very pretty and they're so vibrant. Thank you, uh, they are really pretty actually. I quite quite like them. All right, we're gonna get into the show. I'm gonna have a sip of water and um, we'll talk about spinning growth. I just worked, those of you who are on the Slack channel know I haven't really been around the last couple weeks. So in the last 10 days, I did six shifts in 10 days, which when you're working 12 and a half hours, that's a lot of shifts. And I was constantly flipping back and forth tonight. So I did two nights off for one, two days off for one, a, a night off for one, and then a day. It was horrible. Um, and I just, it was just the way my shifts fell. I'm casual. I don't have a regular line. So it was just constantly flipping back and forth. And, um, Unfortunately, the um, the whole time I had this sore throat, like just no other symptoms, felt tired, but I was working nights and flipping around, so you know, you're gonna be tired. Um, just a sore throat, it didn't turn into anything. This is day 12 and it seems to have kind of gone away, but I never got fully sick. I kept taking oil of oregano and I kept taking zinc lozenges and stuff and I just like, and I never took Advil because my it was never that sore. Anyways, I think I was just a bit run down. I didn't go to the gym for 10 days straight. I went back yesterday, but I took it easy. And uh, I just, I really need a break. <laughs> like, um, part of the reason why th this show is the way that it is and, and we've got the Patreon campaign and everything is because I really enjoy having the, the two things in my life. Like I like having um, my work as a, as a trauma nurse and then I also, I love doing this. This is really what I love. And um yeah, it really reinforced this past week how much I love doing all of this. So uh, thank you to those of you who, who've stuck around in the community and know um, what it's like to work long hours and what it's like to do shift work. So I'm gonna change the cameras around and um, you'll see Eve's Portland yarn come up. Um, she spun this a while ago. I'm gonna read what she wrote. Um, so for spinning growth, we're looking at we're not here to criticize people's yarn. We're not here to say that's terrible yarn and I can't believe you made that. That's not the purpose of spinning growth. The purpose of spinning growth is to say, not all projects turn out 110%. Not all projects you're gonna be happy with. Some projects are gonna be beautifully spun, but you don't like the results because of the color management or maybe there's some other reason. Um, some projects are gonna be really horribly spun and you're gonna say, hey, look what I made. Look at this great yarn because now I've got all this texture to put in a weaving or something. It really depends on what your end goals are. So um, this yarn that Eve spun was some uh, Portland. Um, I'm gonna read what she wrote. This is a skein of Portland spun woolen from hand carded Rolex. Sadly, it is rather overspun, so is now like semi worsted and has lost the lofty poofiness that I was aiming for. And this is the photo. So I hope you guys can see that and I hope um, um, 
I, I, I understand what, what Eve is saying. And I, 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 I get, I've had skeins like this. Um, I've had this happen to me as well. Um, one of the things, so I wanted to say a couple of things about, about spinning from hand carded Rolex. And actually I have just made a whole bunch and I'll grab them and show you. So this is one of my works in progress currently. Um, and this is the bobbin and we'll talk about this a little bit later again, this project. Um, but this is some Suffolk and I had made a whole bunch of hand carded Rolex for, so for those of you who are totally new to spinning and have never spun, don't know some of these, um, terms for, for prepping, um, fiber, these are hand carded Rolex. So, um, they come off the hand cards, um, and you roll the fiber, you card the fiber together, you make this lovely woolen prep. The the fibers are all misaligned and there's no rhyme or reason to how they're um how they're laying in within the rest of the roll leg. And you spin generally you spin long draw. Um it tends to really lend itself to to a more woolen style of spinning. However, I have seen, hi Cindy, I have seen people spin these many different ways. You can spin them worsted, you can spin them woolen, long draw. Um, you can use different, varying, different um, um, smoothing techniques. So when you draw back for, if you're doing um, a semi woolen or a semi worsted, you can draw back and then smooth. Um, draw back a bit smooth. You can allow the twist to go in between your hands and the fiber. So while you're drawing back, you maybe are allowing the twist to run up. But instead of doing a true long draw, you're sort of smoothing as you go and maybe pinching and allowing some of that twist to go through and then allowing that twist to run up, but then drawing back sort of like a short backward draw, but you've got the twist running up a little bit more. Um, there's many, many, many different ways to spin roll eggs. And some of you may be um, familiar with puni style roll eggs that people pull off of their blending boards. So again, they're the same idea, um, but they tend to be sort of um, fibers that are, you know, from comb top or you're blending a whole bunch of stuff. Maybe there's some sparkle in there and you're pulling them off with dowels and then people spin them this way. And people do tend to kind of lean more towards spinning them a little bit more worsted. Um, you know, I think a lot of it's just the, the fiber prep kind of um, lends itself to that because you've got these beautiful colors of comb top and you're sort of um, drawing back. And I think people try to sort of, you know, stretch them out enough that you're getting a really consistent, almost sort of semi-worsted yarn. Um, not always, but sometimes. And then you've kind of got preps like this that are from a, I, I um, carded these from, from, um, roving rather than comb top. So it was already roving and it was already all jumbled up. And then I carded it. I only did one pass between the hand cards and then, um, and then, um, took them off cause it was already roving. It just needed to be prepped in a slightly different way. Um, so with this yarn that, that Eve spun, there's a couple of things that, that you could change. Um, cause she said it's over spun. So it's now like a semi worsted. So there's a couple of things. If you're spinning, I don't know how she spun it. Like I don't know if she was spinning long draw or not, but when, when, when we're spinning from these types of preps, it's really easy for it to all of a sudden get really over twisted. And there's sort of two sides of this. Um, I had put out a, how to learn how to spin long draw, um, quite a while ago, actually, I think that video came out in like 2016. Um, and I had said in the video, like to allow yourself to let that twist build up and have a little bit more twist in there. Because when you're spinning truly woolen, you don't want to have a lot of twist. You want to try to have as low twist singles as possible. Cause the whole purpose of woolen yarn is only to twist it enough that it holds the fibers together and that they're twist locked so that you can't pull them anymore. See this one, I can still pull a bit. So you add a little bit more twist pull a bit. It's not twist locked yet, but now it's twist locked. Now I can't pull it anymore. And that is quite, it's quite low twist. I mean, look at that. It's like super, you can see that on my forehead, how low twist that is. But when you're learning how to spin long draw, um, you, you almost need a little bit more twist to, because otherwise your singles just constantly break and they just drift apart. They don't snap and break like worse, like worsted spun singles. They just drift apart or you'll be plying and they'll start drifting apart. 
And that means you haven't added enough twist, but there's a balance between too much twist and not enough twist. So you want your fibers twist locked, but you don't want them and and so and you but you don't want them overspun so that now you've got rope. And I think what happens when we're first learning how to spin long draws, you end up with areas of the of the singles that are overspun, and then you end up with areas that are underspun. So then when you go to ply them, like with what's happened in Eve's yarn, there's areas of slightly thicker yarn that are loftier and puffier, and then you've got areas that are a little bit thinner because they are more twisted and there's just more twist in the singles. So with this yarn she she says it sort of it now feels more like a semi worsted it's still a semi woolen yarn because it was spun from a woolen prep it's 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 light and airy in the sense that it's not as dense as it would have been if she'd actually spun it worsted short forward smoothing the fibers as you go um but i also think it's really important that you recognize when you're learning how to spin woolen and you're learning how to do long draw it's going to take you quite a number of skeins to get the hang of it and you have to be kind to yourself. This is what I would call like sort of for me, cause I've got a couple of these skeins that look exactly like this in my stash from when I was learning how to do long draw. They're great for weaving. They're great for using as weft, um, sorry, as warp because they're quite strong cause they're over twisted. They give a little bit of texture um, because they are a bit thick and thin and they fold beautifully cause they still have that woolen coarse kind of textury surface on them um, and you'd be surprised what you can do with it um, it's quite amazing Kelly just says something here so I'm just gonna have a quick a quick look um, something she's been learning how this year while getting more comfortable with woolen spinning learning to get that twist just right it's definitely different from worsted spinning it is and it's I, that's a great point Kelly it's it's almost like learning a whole new skill. And, you know, I love J.C. Boggs Faulkner's um, uh, Craftsy class from Worsted to Woolen because I think in some ways you could almost divide that class in half and say the worsted part is one set of spinning skills that many of us um, uh, master. I want, I'm master, but not in like a um, expert kind of way, but we get the hang of it very quickly and become intermediate spinners with the worsted style drafts and the worsted style preps very quickly and early in our spinning careers is generally what we're taught when we first spin not not always but often and then there's the second half of that class that's all woolen and those skills it's it's like learning how to spin all over again and I, I think that we forget that just because you can spin worsted does not mean that you're automatically going to be an amazing woolen spinner and unfortunately Katrina's not in the chat channel today because I would love to hear her thoughts because I've spun a lot more woolen yarn than she has and we came she came to spinning as a new spinner at the same time that I came back to spinning as a spinner who was sort of masterful, sort of what I would call like an intermediate worsted spinner. So I was coming back and sitting down with my friend Diana and sort of learning the stuff that I didn't know. And Katrina was coming to it as a new spinner. So we've sort of been spinning seriously for the same amount of time. But woolen spinning for me is much easier and has come more naturally because I've been worsted spinning for a lot longer. Um, and I don't want to put words in her mouth or to say that I know um, what she would say about, about learning how to spin woolen, but I know it's been a little bit, uh, she's had to, she's still spending more time on her woolen yarns. And for me, woolen and long draw and stuff is a huge escape. Like I just put the wheel on and I just like draw back, draw, I don't even spin supported anymore. Um, I have been spinning this supported cause I wanted to demo it for our Patreon community. And, um, I had to actually go back and make myself remember how to spin supported. So that's where you're holding the single as the twist is, is running up the single and you're drawing back with the fiber and unsupported, this hand does nothing and you're just drawing back. Um, so definitely difficult skills um, and, and stuff that you just have to be um, patient with yourself and, and, and consider a skein like this that Eva spun over here not over here <laughs> um, that it's okay that it's a little bit denser and that's lost its loftiness it's a great learning opportunity I would use it as warp if you have access to a small cricket loom or a sample it loom um, I would throw it on as warp and I would use something else that you're not super super happy with in your stash as weft 
Um, and I think you'd be surprised the the potential that a skein like that has. Um, yeah, I think you'd be surprised. We've got some um, discussion in the in the pop up chat, so I'm just gonna have a quick look. Um, Rebecca, yeah, the big differences in consistency means the twist will not be evenly distributed. Exactly, the twist will always go to the thinner bits, sometimes leaving the thicker bits unspun, which will fall apart. Exactly. So one of the things, um, and actually I took it, I pulled it off, but that little little bit that I was spinning here, I'm going to twist this up again, and I'm going to show you guys something with with long draw. So. If you notice, and it's it's just part of woolen preps because the the fibers are all um, misaligned, like they're not um, th they're not organized like in like in woolen, right? So if you notice in the middle there, it's right in the middle of my forehead. There's that little like sort of um, bundle of fibers there, but on either side the yarn is a little bit thinner. Now if I pull it tight and I start to pull, notice how that particular part that was a bit thicker thins out. It's because the twist jumps over that to the next thinnest point in the single. So when you're holding your long draw and you're at the wheel like this, and consider this front hand where my, the hand with my ring on it is closest to the orifice of the wheel and the roll leg is at the back. As you're drawing back, the, the twist is gonna keep jumping over the points that are a little bit thicker and it's gonna go to the points that are a little bit thinner. So what people make the mistake of doing is continuing to hold the roll leg and continuing to draw back, but all you're doing is creating more thick and thin points, which is fine, because then you get this big long length of singles, but at some point you have to stop. So if you run that into your wheel, you're gonna end up with th you know, slightly thicker, less twist, thinner, no twist, thicker, and so on all the way down the skein. What you need to do is inch this thing, this back hand forward and grab onto the singles before you run it into your wheel and give it a pull very gently and just allow those singles to stretch a bit because all those thick parts are gonna thin out because there's no twist in them. And then that twist can evenly distribute along that entire length of single and then run it into your wheel. But if you pull from your row leg, you're just gonna create a longer and longer and longer singles. You're gonna be way back here. You need to actually come forward, use your pointer and your thumb, grab onto your, onto your singles, and then pull. Does that make sense? Um, and that, I think, is a huge aha moment for many people learning how to spin long draw. It doesn't mean your singles are gonna be any more perfect when you're first learning how to do that, but they're gonna make a big jump in terms of skill. Um, the other thing to think about is woolen singles are never as perfect, quote unquote, as worsted singles. So your bobbin is never gonna look as pretty as a worsted bobbin. It's just fact. You've got airy, lofty, jumbled up fiber that has a slightly coarser um, look to it, it's just not gonna look as pretty. Can you get it much more consistent than you're spinning right now? Absolutely, just takes practice. Um, okay, you guys have gone crazy in the chat channel, so give me one sec to just kinda catch up. Um, the Craftsy class, Kel Kelly recommends it as well, that's awesome. Um, woolen spinning is a huge mental hump, I think, for many people. Um, oh, instead of moving your hand forward, Rebecca, uh, Becca says she flicks it, she flips it backwards to pull the forming single with the pinky finger. Oh, I love that. So that's really, I'm going to play with that. Okay. Thanks Becca for that. Cause I love learning like little new tricks and stuff. Cause on your wheel, you, 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 you kind of have to come forward, but I can totally see how you could flick your hand backward and pull it. Um, that would, I pulled off my little single again, but that would work really well. So instead of going like this, you could flick your hand backward and pull like that. That's brilliant. I love that. Um, the twist jumping over the thick part. Yeah, it started spinning woolen this year. It has been a bit perplexing for me until, yeah, it's, it, well, I, I, when I'm teaching, I kind of put worsted over here and woolen over here. And if we get to woolen, great. And if we don't, it's okay. Cause it's just such a mental jump for people. And in terms of skill, you have to let go of so much control 
Um, and I think when you're first learning how to spin, it's not necessarily something that you have to learn right away. Um, it's something that I think you can come to later and actually be more successful at. So Eve had a second yarn that she talked about. Um, and this was a Perindale skein, which despite coming up at a worsted weight is so dense that she only got 195 yards out of 200 grams, making it 396 yards per pound. So this is really interesting because I had the same thing happen to me with a Perindale skein about three years ago, and I have yet to spin Perindale again, except for carded, uh, except for carded up on the drum carter with other fibers. Um, Perindale is a little bit heavier. It's a heavier fiber, so you're not going to get the yards per pound that you're going to get from other stuff unless you spin it like really, really, really thin. I don't know under what circumstances um, Eve was spinning this. I don't know like how she was feeling at the time. I don't know if she was having some stress or pain or anxiety or if she was rushing the spin. I have no idea. I will say though, some of these spins that come out like this, um, you're probably treadling faster than you thought you were. Um, you're probably drafting thicker than you thought you were. Um, you're probably, your uptake's probably not as high as it could have been because if you'd upped your uptake a little bit, the fibers would have drafted forward a little bit faster if you're treadling faster. Um, your whirl could, probably could have been lower, um, so not quite as much twist entering the fiber. There's any number of things. When these sort of dense, thicker spins happen and you weren't intending it to happen, um, there's probably like a number of different things that were going on and I've had yarns like this as well. The one that I talked about a couple of weeks ago for in episode 97B where I introduced this segment, this was exactly what happened. It was denser, thicker, um, the yards per pound wasn't as good as I thought it would be. It, it was sort of all of these issues all wrapped up in one. Um, so I think um, we, we've all been there. These, these skeins get thicker and denser than we intended. We were maybe rushing. We were maybe stressed. There was something other going, else going on. I tend to spin this way when I'm sick or I'm getting sick. I'll pull a skein off and I'll be really happy with it. And then a couple days later, I get sick. And I knew, oh, I was run down. I wasn't really paying attention. I should have probably been resting or reading a book. Um, and Perindale is a, is, is a sort of on the, I think it's considered a medium wool. Um, Becca, do you know? I think it's a medium. It's a little bit on the slightly coarser side. It's a little bit heavier of a denser fiber. It's like BFL. You're not going to get the yards per pound out of BFL that you're going to get out of Merino for the exact same yarn because it's just a slightly heavier fiber. Um, not enough to make any difference in the grand scheme of things, but it's just something to keep in mind. So with a, with a, um, with a spin like this, it's great for a toque, a cowl, mittens. Um, you know, work with it and learn from it. And um, we've all been there. And it's, it, it's actually is a gorgeous skein. It's very consistent. It's got a lovely twist angle. Um, it would make a great cowl. Um, she said it's a worsted weight, but you know, if you knit something like this up on like six or six and a half millimeter needles into a cowl, it would be lovely. Um, you could also go the other way and spin it a little bit denser and do some mittens and it would be awesome too. So play with it and learn from it, you know, and, and write down some reflections on your Ravelry um, hand spun journal page so that you can go back and see um, A, what it was like to actually work with after you were a little bit disappointed with this gain and B, maybe how it died um, and also um, um, some of the things that were going on with your setup when you spun it so that you can learn from that. Um, we're gonna move on. I'm gonna put the cameras back um, we're going to go product dominant. Eve's not here today. Unfortunately, she's not here today and I did her yarn. Um, cause she, she always cues me to make sure that I put the, put the cameras back. Um, I wanted to show you really quickly. This usually goes in the intro thread, but I wanted to show you, this is the new, um, calendar for 2019. So, um, every six months I redo the calendar so that it starts six months from now. So the one that was just being given out, the last one just went out. It was for July. 2018 to June of 2019. This one's going to be July, uh, January of 2019, all the way to December of 2019. So brand new photos, brand new yarn. So if your if your name comes up again, it would be a different a different um, um, a different set of photos. Um, I'm really happy with how it turned out. Um, I've never offered this before, but if anybody wants to purchase one, you can get in touch with me. I was thinking about maybe putting them in the Etsy shop. 
Um, if anybody would be interested in that, can you guys let me know? Because I, I could do that. I just had never really thought of doing it before. So um, actually, I may as well say who got this because um, um, then it's kind of fun to announce it on the show. Um, Florence actually won this. So Florence is actually on a road trip right now. They are driving around New Zealand in their RV, having lots of fun. She's cooked goalie on... Uh, Slack and I think this I think her username is the same on Ravelry if I'm not wrong anyways um, Florence won one this month so congratulations to Florence um, but that's the new calendar I wanted to show it really quickly because I've spun so much yarn since I started making the old calendar because um, like this is the old one here and like some of this yarns actually like I spun it you know a cup a year year and a half ago now um, so I thought I'd update it and Put in some of the breed and color study yarns and, you know, sort of for, because for those who have participated, be like, oh yeah, I remember that. You know, that's kind of fun. Um, I got the new ply magazine. Um, so, oh, Becca said that she would be interested. So that would be awesome. Okay, I'll, I'll maybe throw a couple of them up in the Etsy shop. And if you guys are interested, you can head over there. Um, yeah, the new ply magazine is flyer led, so it's everything Scotch Tension. Um, I'm, I haven't gotten into it yet. I literally just opened the package, but I'm looking forward to getting into this while we're away. Um, so I will be, um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to going over it and, and having a look at it. All right, let's get into some of my, my FOs. I finished a skein of yarn. Yay, another finished skein. Um, so... I talked about this one last show when we were um, camping and um, I you guys were so kind about that um, the comments that I got about recording that while we were away and while we were camping you guys um, seem to really enjoy that and, and um, that was really fun so thank you I, I might actually do it again and we might have an extra episode um, because we're away this coming weekend and I might take the camera again so um, that was really fun. Um, so this was my Superwash uh, BFL hackled with um, vegan yarns, um, uh, uh, vegan cashmere, which is just microfiber. And this is the yarn that I just finished. So this is uh, Superwash BFL and nylon. So the whole purpose of doing these two spins this spring is to, fingers crossed, theoretically, knit two pairs of socks um, and to compare and contrast the two and how different they are. And this is part of the um, content for um, our theme that we're going to be delving into in October around socks. Um, so I'm very curious to see. I'm not a big nylon person. I don't feel like you have to have nylon in your socks. Um, I wear um, blendstones all winter and the sole is taken out because I have to make room for my um, orthotics to go at the back. So the balls of my feet and my toes walk on um, the screws that are inside the boots all winter. Um, and my, none of my hand spun socks have popped a hole. Um, the only socks that have popped a hole ever um, were my Cheviot two ply socks that I did for Ply Magazine a couple of years ago um, in their down breed issue. I wrote a big article for them for that issue and they got caught on a nail, the bottom of the one sock, and it just ripped them. And I think a three ply sock probably wouldn't have ripped as badly, but they just it just shredded them. Um, and I wrote about that in the article. Anyhow, I'm very curious um, how the nylon is going to wear in comparison to the cashmere. So that's kind of the purpose. Um, the interesting thing about these two skeins is to the untrained eye, they look very similar. Um, and I think part of it is the BFL because it gives it a bit of a sheen. Um, they're both three ply. They're both worsted spun. They're both very high twist. They're both already finished. Um, I'll just un undo them a bit other than the blinding color of the yellow one <laughs> um, they're very similar they're similar weight in terms of how they were spun just refocus the camera here um, they're very similar in the weight and how they were spun um, they're both a semi-solid which is kind of interesting just um, because I tend to for socks spin kind of crazier yarn but it just happened that these these were the yarns that I the fibers that I chose, um, and like I said, they're very, they're they're the same uh, spun weight. They're both um, twenty four wraps per inch, I think. I think. Do I have my spinner's control card? I don't think I have a control card right here that I can check. I usually have one like right here, right near me. 
but I'm not sure that I do today. Well, that's too bad. Anyhow, um, I'm not gonna. I'm not going to waste time looking for one because I'd probably have to go to the other room and grab it off my wheel. Um, anyhow, they're both, I think they're 24 wraps per inch. They might be 26 or 28. I'm, I just can't remember. I wrote it down on the control cards. Um, they're both finished, like I said, so that's why they're laying um, flat. They didn't, uh, neither of them laid flat when I first finished them. And I'll put some photos at the beginning um, in the intro um, of what they look like before, when they were still active twist before I finished them. Um, and wash them and everything. But anyways, I'm going to skein these up to, or they're already skeined. I'm going to ball them up today and get them ready to take with us on our trip so that I can get um, knitting. So, because I want to do two pairs of socks, one from each, and uh, we'll see how it goes. They both have a lovely sheen. You can probably see from the light hitting them. Um, they just have a, a nice uh, sheen to them. This one especially, the yellow one has especially has a sheen and I think that's the microfiber. Um, and I think the BFL, I'm pretty sure it's 85.15 is the BFL nylon um, and the vegan cashmere, yeah it's 85.15. Um, and the vegan cashmere was 50-50 so they're not absolutely identical but I wanted to um, use up as much of the fiber as possible. So I have another 50 grams of each of these, the uh, Harvest, which is a colorway from uh, my friend Katrina from Crafty Jacks. And um, I still have 50 grams left of the um, vegan cashmere, so we'll see. They both came out roughly the same in yardage. Um, this one came out at uh, 500 yards and the vegan cashmere came out at like 485, something like that. And they're both roughly the same in terms of um, weight. They're both about 100, 110 grams. So um, I'm gonna start knitting on those as soon as possible and sort of see how they end up and how they turn out because um, they've ended up being, they're really pretty. They look nice together. I know a couple of people have said how much they like them together. They look really nice together. It'll be nice to have the two pairs of socks done and then to wear them through the fall and see what the wear is like. Um, I'm also going to do some knitted swatches of both of them and I'm going to do some woven samples of both of them. So we'll be sharing that on the uh, Patreon content in the fall. So that is those. And um, like I said, I spun them very high twist. They were both done on my Magicraft Susie, which I didn't mean to. They just kind of ended up being that way. And they were um, spun at like 28 to 1, something like that. Mostly just so I could move quickly. And then I carded up all these roll legs. Um, so I wanted to do some wool woolen socks to compare against my worsted socks. So this is going to be a three ply. So funny story, I have uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine more roll legs to spin. It takes me about 10 minutes to spin each roll leg. So I have about an hour and a half of spinning left. I'm desperately trying to get this done because my friend Kelsey, who's a weaver, if you don't follow her on Instagram, you really should. It's, um, she's Kelsey Tremblett. Um, she spun, she has made up a, an indigo vat and she's invited me and Mari and Jess, who are all in the Slack channel and Katrina, of course, um, and Felicia over to do some dyeing on Friday. And I'm really excited, but because I just love the color of indigo, but I really wanted to throw this skein in to see how this fiber would take the dye. It's Suffolk. I'm pretty sure it's Suffolk. It might be Suffolk CVM. Um, I'm not sure because the writing on the bag that Margaret gave me, it's from Semiamu Suffolk, just in South Surrey here locally, just outside of Vancouver, um, is, I'm in Vancouver, British Columbia in Canada. Um, is um, labeled really strange. It's got CMV on it and then a question mark and then, and then Suffolk. So I'm not sure what's in it and what the fiber was. I'm pretty sure it's just straight Suffolk. Um, anyways, I want to throw <laughs> this fiber into the indigo vat, but it's Tuesday morning and the indigo vat is Friday afternoon. <laughs> so I have to spin the rest of the singles, 
move the singles onto weaving bobbins because I was originally going to do a two ply but then we had a whole conversation in the slack channel about um, whether or not I should do a two ply or a three ply and people were like please do a three ply please so I'm going to do a three ply which I think is actually the right thing to do I thought about it over the weekend at work and I was like you know I think it'll probably be better I find ribbing and two ply isn't as great as ribbing and three ply and with socks you want a nice good ribbing um, at the top to hold them up because I, I knit my socks toe up Anyways, long story short, I need to get this yarn done. So um, I'm really hoping that I can get it done. If I don't get it done, I'm sure Kelsey will throw it in for me another day or maybe Katrina would throw it into one of her exhaust baths. Um, when she's dying one day, I'll just leave it with her and maybe she'll throw it in over the next month or so. But um, I really wanted to get it done for Friday. So Mari's going to do some raw wool and I think Jess's got some raw wool that she wants to do. So. I'd really like to throw it in and to do it. So I, the reason why I need to put the singles onto weaving bobbins is because I only, this um, is my one bobbin of 50 grams and then I have the other bobbin that I'm spinning this stuff to. It's the other 50 grams, but the problem is I wanna do a three ply. So I have to move the singles off, but if I move them off, if I move some of them off, I need to move all of them off because of the whole first spun, first plied thing. Um, we had a whole conversation about first bun, first ply a couple of shows ago. Um, but basically, when you start to move your singles off, I don't want to be spinning some from the first spun end and some from the last spun end, if that makes sense. Are you guys following me? So I need to make sure that um, I move all of my singles off um, because it wouldn't be very good to move only some. I'm going to move my cameras again. And uh, I'm just really hoping I can get this spin done. Um, it would be really great if I could get it done. Um, the reason why I'm going to a this one camera is because I'm going to grab my dress form. And I'm going to grab my basket with my sweater in it. And um, show you my progress on my sparkle cardigan. So this is a pattern by Hohi Locatelli. This is the back. And unfortunately it's been laying in my basket for the last week because I haven't worked on it. I didn't want to start the sleeves until I showed it to you guys because once I had the sleeves hanging off because they're knit from the top down so the sleeves are picked up around the arm sky and then worked down. Once I had them on I knew it would be kind of challenging to like talk to you guys and show you. And I sort of thought well maybe I'll just wait. I had other stuff to work on anyways. I have been working on my Skywalker shawl. Um, it, it's almost, I was gonna say I'm only 50% through the, through the first part before you get to the lace charts, but I'm actually a bit further than that. So um, I'm getting there. Um, before I forget, we've also started Tour de Fleece. So for those of you who are participating in the Ravelry group in Tour de Fleece, um, I hope you're enjoying spinning so far. I, um, have been working on, on my Rolex. That's my first project for Tour de Fleece. And, um, I have had in my stash. But that was weird. It's never done that before. I'm going to have to talk to my husband or IT support. Um, okay. So this is the back of the sparkle cardigan. Um, and it is, um, you can see how the whole back of the cardigan looks relatively solid. Um, it, it will, it's supposed to open up quite a lot when it gets washed and blocked. Um, all of these yarn overs all in here are all supposed to bloom and open. So I chose to knit one size bigger um, based on a couple of things that I'd seen written by people in their project pages on Ravelry. And I'm just really hoping that once the cardigan um, is washed and blocked that it just opens it up. Um, because it's also going to be a little bit longer than this too. Like it should come down more like to where the legs are, the bottom of the legs, not not this high up and I wanted sort of a longer slightly fancier kind of a cardigan 
So as you can see, then the button band is done. So I know it's a bit far away to see and actually I can zoom in the camera. I'll just fix the, the cardigan on the, on the dress form so that um, it's nice and laying properly. But in the pattern, it called for a button band that you worked your way, more of like a traditional button band. Um, you would um, pick up along here and then knit out. Um, so that was sort of a, um, more of like a traditional, a traditional style button band on, on a sweater. And I ended up not doing that. So I ended up um, knitting a one by one rib. Um, I'm just gonna help Eve Um, I picked up a one by one, or sorry, I knit a one by one rib, um, and I knit it separately. And actually, that when I when I recorded the um, show when we were camping, this is actually what I was working on was this one by one rib. While we were driving, I had actually knit the rest of the body and finished the body of the cardigan. And I have to say, um, it. I knit the entire sweater from here to here without making a mistake and it felt really good. <laughs> um, I didn't have to rip back once. I just, I think it was just enough um, like patterning that I didn't mix it up. I was really worried that I was going to mix up the rows because you do, um, one of the yarn over rows is done one way and then the next one's done a different way and then you go back to the first one then back to the second one back to the first one all the way down and it gives you it's just different decreases slanting different ways but it, it's a different look and it gives you kind of this waffle look anyhow long story short um, it worked really nice and then I separately started knitting the one by one button band and I was really worried because I was worried that the stitches were gonna look too um, loose if that makes sense like I was really worried they're gonna look loose but that's not what's happened at all um, they're quite tight looking and once they're sewn down or now that they're sewn down they it just gives like a really nice edge um, and then I've got my buttonholes here maybe they're on the other side yeah the buttonholes are here and there's nine of them and they start kind of um, down the bottom part of the cardigan because they are, um, um, it's a V neck and it's a deep V. So the V goes all the way down to here. So this is what I mean about when it blocks out that it's going to be, um, not bouncier. What's that word? Um, like it's just going to open up. Whereas right now, like it's really tight. The fabric is tight. Um, and it needs to relax a little bit into those yarn overs and let it all open up. And because it's a two ply, it should do that. And my, my gauge swatch certainly did it. It definitely opened up. Um, so I knit this separately and then I sewed it on. That's right, um, Kelly. She was wondering if I attached it after. So I, I, I knit all the way up and around. There's a couple of photos on Instagram of me doing it and I'll, um, I'll put in a couple of photos here so you can really see what I mean. But I, um, I knit the button band separately. I, I um, figured out what I needed to do to create a seaming knit stitch. So it was knit, knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, and then the opposite on the back. And that gave me that double knit at the beginning, gave me that knit stitch that I needed to sew it on to the cardigan itself. And then I created my button holes up the first part. And once I got to here, yeah, this is my last my last buttonhole is right here because this is where my V my increases for the V neck finish, um, and then I just kept knitting and kept knitting and kept knitting and kept knitting. And as, whenever I thought that I had gotten enough, I would match it up, and then I'd just keep knitting, keep knitting. And then when I got down to here, um, when I got to about here, I stopped knitting and I sewed it on. And sure enough, I was kind of more like here, and then I did the last row. Um, and cast off and sewed it so that it just matched up absolutely perfectly. It's super fiddly to do that. Um, most people don't want to take the time because it takes a long time. Like I could have had both sleeves done in the time that it took me to do that. However, 
I love what it looks like. To me, it makes it's the difference between a really professional looking sweater um, with this much work in it, with all this lace work in it and all the hand spinning, all the plying. To me, it's the difference between a sweater that is really beautifully finished and something that I just sort of arbitrarily picked up the button band and finished. I don't like the look of picked up button bands as much as these seamed button bands and also I think it actually creates a nicer edge here because um, it looks really nice and clean and I'll take some photos of it close up and then you can really see um, but I just prefer the look and I with all the work in this sweater it was totally worth it um, it's worth it taking the time to have a great finish yeah I'll be so much happier you're so right Becca um, after all that work you've done, it deserves some attention on the finishing too. Absolutely, because like all these, all these ends in here that need to be sewn in, like before I start the sleeves, I'm going to take the time to weave them in really nicely um, and get that all finished off so that the inside of the sweater is just as nice as the outside so that if somebody were to come along and say, oh, and open it up, if they were looking at it like at a show or something on a, on a dress form or something, um, I would be proud to have somebody looking at the inside of it because I am going to offer it to Lori when she has her booth at Fibers at Knit City in October. I'm going to offer it to her and say if she wants to show it, she, she can because it's her fiber. Um, it's the, her Romney mohair um, from Disdero Ranch. So anyhow, that is my sparkle cardigan. I'm going to start the sleeves. I have to get those socks knit, so I think this might go on hiatus until October, or sorry, until uh, August, but that's okay. Um, I'm not in any hurry to finish it. I'd like to have it done for Knit City, but um, until then, um, I'm happy to let it languish for a couple of weeks while I get those socks knit. So fingers crossed I can get my carded um, fiber working, my, my carded fiber done, get those row legs finished, and um, hopefully I can, um, yeah, get some stuff done. <laughs> The other thing I was going to say, I'm probably not going to dye this. I was originally going to, but I'm loving the cream. Um, I think it lo it looks nice on me too. And um, I really like how neutral it is. It'll go with absolutely everything. So I'm actually thinking I might just leave it as is. I'm going to take a, I'm going to get Kat Katrina to take up a couple photos and then I'll decide afterwards. Um, but that's kind of my plan. So I think we're going to say goodbye. It's been over an hour. Um... And uh, I think, oh, thank you, Becca. I would be so honored to show such a wonderful item made in my fiber. That's so nice. I, you know, if I was, like, if, if it was me, I would be as well. Um, and I'd be really excited if somebody wanted to lend something like this to me. Because, um, you know, like, whether it's a blanket or a throw or something woven or whatever, if it's done from the raw fiber all the way through to a finished object and you've spent so much time on it, I would be so excited if somebody were to offer that to me as well. So... Um, yeah, I'm glad I'm not the only one. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys have a wonderful couple of weeks. I will see you at the end of July. We're going to be streaming July, I think it's 31st, which is one of my best friend's birthdays, so um, I won't forget. And uh, I think we're going to be streaming at this time again on, a, I think it's a Tuesday morning as well. And until next time, I hope you have lots and lots of creative time this summer and um, really enjoy um, working on your stuff. What I was going to say about Tour de Fleece, I got cut off because I was distracted because everything crashed. Um, for Tour de Fleece, I've been working on my, my Rolex spin because I have to get that done. But I have this baby llama silk roving. I've had it in my stash for years and I keep wanting to spin it. And every time I bring it out to spin it, something else takes precedent and I end up spinning it instead. I can't find it. So I've been looking and looking and looking. I've spent like probably an hour looking for it now um, and I cannot find it. So um, I'm going to go look again now before I have to go pick up the kids, but fingers crossed I can find it. I'm finding that I've got this stuff in my stash that's now getting to be two or three years old and I, I just really want to spin it. I'm not bringing in new fiber into my stash. I'm not buying any new stuff right now. It's been a while since I bought stuff to bring into my stash. I really want to focus on some of this other stuff and I that's what I wanted to do for Tour de Fleece and now I can't find it. So anyhow, if you want to join our team, come on into the Ravelry group. We've got Becca, Linda, and Linda as our co-captains. I'm going to be out of cell phone range for a couple, for about 
several days so I won't be checking in but um, I hope you guys have a wonderful tour and I will uh, we'll do prizes and whatnot when the tour is over and we'll I'm gonna start an FO thread for the tour as well and you guys can share your finished skeins keep it chatter free and we'll use that to draw prizes from at the end all right happy spinning everyone I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you next time bye